Welcome to my office, the woodshed. Come on in. Please let me know if you can, um, if you can hear me as well. I would like somebody to put down if they can hear me or not. Um, so yeah, welcome to my office, the woodshed. When there's an old school saying that, you know, if, if dad brought you out to the woodshed, dad meant business. Dad meant business, you know what I'm saying? And um, so the father means business. So we're sitting in the woodshed because the father means business. Okay. I've been sitting with the Lord today going over um, scripture and um, we just want to release a word. Um, it's not um, something that I've released as far as, um, you know, uh, preaching, but, um, you know, I've, I've brought little pieces, pieces here, pieces there, but not an entire teaching on it. Um, so the Lord has to move here. Um, to say what he wants to say and whew, <laughs> a great big bird just flew in front of me i'm going to turn this around because it's much more beautiful much more beautiful out there so and let's see if i can zoom in yeah there we go isn't that pretty um I've been burning up some old logs that I've had sitting here forever. This fire has been going for about seven days or so. So we are um, sending up incense to the Lord, okay? Let's send up some incense to the Lord. Let's uh, fill the bowls in heaven. Let it be a sweet aroma unto him let it be a sweet aroma lord unto you this word lord i can do nothing without you i need you i need you to speak here today um we thank you for your word we thank you that you teach us in truth in spirit and in truth you teach us and thank you, Lord. That you are the way. And that your word brings life. And I just ask you to open it up here today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, I'm in Numbers, and I'm going to start at Numbers uh, in the Old Testament, Numbers 22. In Numbers 22, Balak, Balak, that's King Balak, sends for Balaam. Balak was the king of the Moabites, the Moabites king. And Balaam was a sorcerer or a soothsayer, a fortune teller, a magician um, that was known in those parts, in those places at that time. And so when people wanted to um, have something 
done if they wanted to. Um, uh, he was a, um, a dream interpreter. So they would call on him. Um, the only thing is, is that he, he was not doing these things through the Spirit of God. He was um, um, drawing from um, another spirit. And we know that any other spirit than the Spirit of the living God is, is demonic. And so we don't draw from any other spirits. We don't draw from any other spirits other than the spirit of the living God. We don't call on any other spirits but, then the, but the spirit of the living God. Okay? So, anyways, um, so Balak, King Balak of the Moabites, um, uh, he called for Balaam. And the reason he called for Balaam was because the Israelites were coming into his territory and everywhere that they had been coming into every territory they had been coming into they were defeating um, the people they were defeating and taking over the land so uh, God um, so I'm sorry yeah God sent the Israelites and when they were when they were went into this land uh, Balak got, uh, he, he was fearful because he was afraid that they were going to take over his land and kill everybody. And so he, he, he acted and he acted in his own, um, strength. And so, uh, he called for Balaam. Um, he was acting out of fear and fear and pride uh, manipulate and control fear and pride manipulate and control it's a lack of trusting in God and letting God have his way um, it's um, it acts in its own strength it acts in its own power but 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 not by the spirit of the living God so Balak calls for this, uh, what had been known as the dream interpreter or the soothsayer or the sorcerer or the fortune teller. He calls out for Balaam and he sends his messengers to Balaam and they, he offers them money, or sorry, offers him money to come and put a curse on Israel so Israel cannot take over the land. But see, Israel is God's people. God's people. And so he wants to take out God's people. Well, how many know that's never going to happen? Never has, never will. He cannot take out God's people. If God is for them, then who can be against them? Nobody. Okay, it, you know, God is with them. God is their strength. And so he calls out for Balaam and he asks Balaam, you know, he, he's going to, to pay him to curse, curse the Israelites. And, um, but that night, um, God came to Balaam and asked him, who are these men that are visiting you? These men that came to him and to pay him to uh, curse the Israelites so that they wouldn't defeat the Moabites. And um, he said, who are these people? You know, God doesn't have to ask the question because God already knows, but he was having a conversation with him. So he says, you know, who are these people? And, um, and uh, Balaam said to God, Balak, uh, it's Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent me this message. Look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt, and they cover the face of the earth. Come and curse the people for me. Then perhaps I will be able to stand up to them and drive them from the land. But God told Balaam, do not go with them. You are not to curse these people, for they have been blessed. So you see, God said, don't go. Don't do this thing. 
okay? So he, he showed himself to Balaam. He, he came to Balaam. He spoke to Balaam, even though Balaam was um, a false prophet, okay? Even though, because God can use anybody he wants to, and God will show himself to anybody he wants to. God will use anything and anybody he wants to to accomplish his plan and purpose. So God showed himself. He came to him. He spoke to him. He had an encounter with the living God, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. So the next morning, Balaam got up and told Balak's officials that had come to him to try to bribe him to do, you know, pay him to do this thing. He said, go home. The Lord will not let me go with you, okay? When you have an, account, an encounter with the living God, it has an effect on you. It, it, there, there, will be, there should be a fear of God. I'm not going to do this thing. Even though I didn't serve God, I just met him. He spoke to me. I'm not going to do this thing. So he says, no, I will not do it. I will not curse them. Okay, so, um, so the, the, the officials went back to Balak um, and they told him what, I'm trying to find the spot here, uh, let's see, then Balak tried again, there we go, so Balak tried again and um, he said, this is what, and he sent another messenger, and this is what Balak's son of Zipper said, please don't let anything stop you from coming to help me. See, it was fear that was driving him. He was fear driven. So he's, he's gonna manipulate, and he's going to control because fear is driving him, okay? He doesn't have, a relationship with God he doesn't have he's not putting his trust in God he's gonna take care of business himself so he sends another messenger to um, to Balaam please don't let anything stop you from coming to help me I will pay you very well and do whatever you tell me to just come and curse the people for me he wants them cursed so they cannot prosper and he's gonna try to pay them pay the prophet to do what they wanted to do that's a, that's a false prophet when you can be paid to do something that's a false prophet okay manipulation control uh it's it's a an exchange it's a it's a coven not a covenant and um it's not because God said God wasn't nowhere in that. Do this, do this for me because I'm manipulating. I'm gonna pay you to do this. But Balaam responded to Balak's messengers. Even if Balak were to give me his place palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord my God. See, he had an encounter with God to where he, he knew the power of God, okay? When you meet God, I promise you, you know the power of God. You, you just, you know, you, you know that you know his power. Um, but stay here one more, okay, so let's see, where am I? Uh, but stay here one more night and I will see if the Lord has anything else to say to me. So he says he's not going to do it, but he, but he says, but stay here and we'll see what else the Lord has to say. Okay, so that night, God comes to Balaam again, and he says, he says, these men have come for you. Get up and go with them. Okay, the first time he says, do not go with them. Whatever you do, do not go with them. You will not curse my people. Okay. But now he says, go ahead and go with them, okay? So God is going to use him for his plan and purpose. God is going to um, have, he's, he's going to have his way, 
and um, he's going to use this prophet, but he has to be a true prophet to um, get his plan fulfilled and for his glory. He has to be a true prophet. He has to speak by the by the, the word of God. He has to speak whatever God tells him to speak um, and not be moved by it. So um, God has to have his way in Balaam to get um, this accomplished. So as Balaam gets up the next day to go, um, and, and uh, as he's on his way and he's riding his donkey, um, the, the, an angel of the Lord appears. And, um, well, let me back up just a second. It says, uh, it says God was angry. Well, why was God angry? Because, because God is the one that said, go ahead and go, but it says God is angry. Well, God was angry for his original intent, his original, um, you know, the, the way that he prophesied. He could not go as a false prophet. He had to go as a true prophet. So God had to do a work in him. And because God is still going to use him. So he, he's along his, he's along the route. He's on his way there to speak to the people. And um, so, uh, so the angel of the Lord appears to him and his donkey along the path. In the, and the donkey can see the angel of the Lord, all right? So three times, three times this happened. And each time that the donkey could see, um, I believe it was God, uh, each time the, the donkey could see. And the donkey, um, you know, was afraid. And so the donkey acted up. Um, let's see, what does it say? Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. The donkey bolted off the road in a field, in the field, and, and Balaam, Balaam beat the donkey. Okay, that was the first time. Then the donkey saw the Lord again, and it tried to squeeze by and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So Balaam beat the donkey again. So the third time, um... The donkey, and see, what did he do? He saw the angel. He, he Oh, he laid down. He just stopped. He's like, I, I'm not doing this anymore, you know, because he, even the donkey had the fear of God. So uh, Balaam got off and he beat him. And, he's, and um, he said, this time the donkey saw the angel. It lay down under Balaam. If in a fit of rage, Balaam beat the animal again with, a, with his staff. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. Oops. Okay, we okay? All right. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I hope you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. I would like if somebody can tell me. Um, now that we're in this far, I would, if you can hear me, please let me know. So, anyways... Um, he, he's, you know, he got angry with the donkey. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. He says, what have I done to you to deserve your beating me three times? He asked Balaam. You have made me look like a fool, Balaam shouted. If I had a sword with me, I'd kill you. But I am the, but I am the same donkey you have ridden all your life. The donkey answered. Have I ever done anything like this before? No, Balaam admitted. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. See, God had to do something radical. God, God had to do something, you know, miraculous for Balaam to know that God was there and that he meant business, okay? Because, um... He wanted to capture his attention and um, that he wouldn't go and just do any old fool thing. He wouldn't go there 
um, because his intention in the beginning, you know, would have been, um, you know, not, it, it wasn't God's heart and he would have been going with the wrong intention. So God had to, God had to do a work in him. And so then God released him to go, but God still had to do a work in him so that he would fear God and he would um, do and accomplish God's purpose. So then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road way, standing in the roadway with a drawn sword in his hand. Balaam bowed his head and fell face down to the ground before him. See, that's the fear of the Lord. Why did you beat your donkey those three times? The angel of the Lord demanded. Look, I have come to block your way because you are stubbornly resisting me. See, he couldn't go in his own will. So God had to God had to capture his attention so that when he did go, he was um, in God's will instead of out of God's will. Okay? So God, God had to do a work in him yet. Three times the donkey saw me and shied away. Otherwise, I would have certainly have killed you by now and spared the donkey. It's pretty bad when an ass can see God before we can. Yes, I said it. You heard me. It's pretty bad, huh? Pretty bad. I don't need to I don't need to say it again, but but we need to be woken up. We need to be woken up. Okay? So um so he was going with in his heart position was not right. He was going to go ahead and do this thing, but his heart position wasn't right. So God had to capture his attention. Um, he had to do it kind of radically. And, uh, but then once he got a hold of him, it says here, um, then Balaam confessed to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I didn't realize you were standing in the road to block my way. I will return home if you are against my going. Okay, I didn't even, I've read this story before, but you know, how many know the word of God is alive and active, it's living, okay, and God will use um, his word when, where, how he sees fit, and it'll only open up to you, his word will only open up to you when he wants it to be revealed to you. So there's power in the blood and there's power in the testimony. So recently, um, I was going to do something. Um, this is true story. Now this is testimony. I was going to do something that was, um, my heart position was not in God's complete will. Okay. It wasn't incomplete. There was, there was something that was a little off that needed to be corrected. So um, God gave me the warning signs, just like he gave Balaam the warning signs with the donkey. He, God gave me the warning signs, you know, stop, don't do it, don't go there, don't do it. And he gave me the warning signs and I ignored them and I made excuses. And, but then, um, you know, God, go ahead and do this thing, um, but you're going to do it my way. You're going to do and you're going to say what I say to say. You're going to do what I say to do. Okay. And, and God had his way with me, um, even in it even in it. So whatever was meant for evil, whatever was out of God's order, God brought it into order. But just like Balaam, I confessed, you know, Lord, um, you know, I searched myself because, you know, when there's not peace in something, you know, um, there should be peace in it. When, when God's hand is on it, then there should be peace in it. And, um, and I was like, you know, so I had to confess to him, you know, I had to search myself and I confessed, Lord, you know, my heart position was off here. 
okay so once the repentance came then um my eyes you know my eyes were completely i should say my eyes were opened and i confessed and then god used what you know the the mess that i stepped into the thing that i stepped into he took it and um he he turned it around for his glory and he's he's um he's doing a work okay he's he used um me uh to be a messenger he used me to um i haven't gotten that far in the story yet but well yes i kind of have balaam spoke truth to power he had to speak to the king i will not do that because god told me not to do that i will not curse those people because God's hand is on those people and I will not do it no matter what you say, no matter how you manipulate me, how, no matter how you control me, no matter how much money you give me, I will not do it because I have seen God. I have fear for God. Okay? So he confessed his sins there on the, on the way, on the path. All right, so now God can use him as a true prophet, okay? He's in line with the Lord. He's in God's will, okay? So he has confessed now, all right? So let's keep going. Um, yes, so he confesses, and then the Lord, the next thing the Lord says to him, let me see if I read all that. Okay, it says, I, okay, yep, he says, he confesses, and he, and he even says, I will go back, Lord. I will go back if you want me to. But the Lord says, no, keep going. But the next thing he says, he says, um, go with these men, but say only what I tell you to say. Okay, so do only what I say. Say only what I say. Nothing else. Okay. So, um, then it goes on to, um, let's see, where do I want to go from there? So King Balak heard again that, that Balaam would not bow to his wishes. He, he was not going to, he was only going to do what the Lord said to do. And, um, Balak says, why didn't you come right away? Balak asked Balaam, didn't you believe me when I said I would reward you richly? Balaam replied, look, now I have, I have come, but I have no power to say whatever I want. I will speak only the message that God puts in my mouth. Okay, so he, he definitely had a radical encounter with God. He was not going to um, bow to, to being bought. He was not going to make any covens. He was going only going to, he had, he had made a covenant with God. Okay, so he wasn't going to bow to Balak. Then Balaam accompanied Balak to Kirith Hazath, where the king sacrificed cattle and sheep. He sent portions of the meat I uh, probably didn't need to read that part right there to you. Um, the next morning, Balak took Balaam up to Bimoth Baal. From there, he could see from some of the people of Israel spread out below. This is, this is very interesting and kind of a side note. But um, if you know the story where Jesus was in the wilderness and Jesus, the the devil confronted jesus three times and says i'll give you this i'll give you that i'll do you know it just you know if you just do this and um and three times jesus said you know he would not do it for it is written it is written it is written so he submitted to god and resisted the devil and the devil left him this same thing happened in this story okay in this story 
King Balak went to Balaam three times and showed him things and promised him things. And three times Balaam said, I will not bow. I will not do that because the, this is what the Lord has said. Okay, so everything you see, you know, in the New Testament, it, you know, there's, um, there's an Old Testament story for a New Testament story. You got to have the eyes to see. The Spirit will open it up to you. Okay. So, um, he says, look now, I have come to you, but I have no power to say whatever I want. I will speak only what God says. Okay. So, Balaam, um, Balaam blesses Israel. Uh, let's see. Where do I want to go from there? Um, okay. The Lord gave Bal Balaam a message for King Balak. Then he said, go back to Balak and give him my message. So Balaam returned and found the king standing beside his burnt offering um, with the officials of Moab. This was the message Balaam delivered, okay? This is the word of the Lord. This is a true prophet bringing the word of the Lord. True prophets have seen the face of God. They have heard his voice, okay? So um, he releases this message from the Lord. Balak summoned Balak summoned me to come from Aram. The king of Moab brought me from the eastern hills. Come, he said, curse Jacob for me. Come and announce Israel's doom. But how can I curse those whom God has not cursed? See, he even, he knew, he had the fear of God. I am not going to curse these people who God has not cursed. He, he knew God was with them. How can I condemn those whom the Lord has not condemned? I see them from the cliff tops. I watch them from the hills. I see a people who live by themselves, set apart from the other nations. Who can count Jacob's descendants and numerous, who are as numerous as dust? Who can count even a fourth of Israel's people? Let me die like the righteous. Let my life end like theirs. This man had a radical encounter. He had a radical encounter with God. Let me die like they will die. He turned from his wicked ways. So King Balak gets angry with him and he demands, What have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies. Instead, you have blessed them. But Balaam replied, I will speak only the message that the Lord puts in my mouth. Okay, I just gave you a testimony a couple minutes ago where I went, you know, someplace and um, came in agreement with something where um, uh, my heart, position was was uh it was not the complete will of god okay and because of that there was manipulation and control and in that manipulation and control um they kept coming back well do this oh do this do that and i would keep saying god said god said no god said no i will not do that thing Okay, and each time I said, I will not do that thing, um, there was another angle. There was another um, hand of manipulation, if you will. Um, so I had, to, I had to be wise as a serpent because serpents move in, in ways that we don't always see. You have to, you got to see like they move. You have to be wise as them because a serpent will, um, they're very sneaky. 
So if they can't come in the front door, they will sneak around to the back door. If they cannot come in the back door, they will come in through a window. So we have to be wise as a serpent. So this king kept manipulating and trying to um, coerce him and move him, but he would not move because he had a living encounter with God. So he was standing his ground. I will not move. I will not speak what the Lord does not tell me to speak. And that's what I had to do. I, I will not speak. And I will only say what the Lord says, me, says for me to say. So I had to speak truth to power in my situation and in Balaam's situation here. He had to speak truth to power. I ain't moving for you. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care who they think you are. I don't care what who the world says. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. You're not moving me. Only God is going to move me. So he stood ground. Okay? Not by my might. Not by my power. But by the spirit. By the spirit of the living God. We defeat the enemy. Okay, so he stood ground because he had that radical encounter with God. Okay, so then where do we go from there? Where do we go from there? So he confronts him again. Uh, then King Balak told him, come with me. So he, he doesn't, he still doesn't listen to him. He still wants to manipulate him. So let's go down. I'm in Numbers 23, if you want to follow along, if you can follow along with me, I'm kind of jumping around here. But um, so he tries to manipulate him again. And um, so then, um, so he does, he, he goes through his manipulation rituals. And then the Lord met Balaam and gave him a message. Here comes another message from the Lord. Then he said, go back to Balak and give him, give him enough, this message. So Balaam returned and found the king standing beside his offering. Um, and he asks Balaam, what did the Lord say? Balak asked eagerly. Uh, so this is what, this was the message Balaam delivered. Excuse me, I need to get it. I need a drink here. Just a second. <clears throat> so, Balaam releases another message to him. He says, this is, this is what the Lord says, rise up, Balak, and listen, and listen. That's what I had to do. Listen. This is what the Lord said. This isn't me. So stop manipulating. Listen. Listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. Are you listening? Are you listening yet? Rise up, Balak, and listen. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. He's not going to change his mind. It don't matter what you say. Don't matter what you do. Don't matter what you offer me. Doesn't matter if you have a hissy fit. fit. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you rage. It doesn't matter if you threaten me. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I'm standing ground. He has he, he has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised not promised and not carried it through? Listen, he keeps saying, listen. I received a command to bless. God has blessed and I cannot re reverse it. No misfortune is in his plan for Jacob. No trouble is in store for Israel. Israel is God's people. Don't you dare come against God's people. Don't you dare. God will come against you. For the Lord their God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. The king of kings in the Lord of lords, Balak. You are a king, but the king of kings is speaking right now. So have a little seat over there. Have a seat. Sit down. He has...
has been proclaimed their king. God brought them out of Egypt for the wild ox. No. Okay. Looks like I'm back on, but right now I cannot see because it's in the sun. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try to go back to my spot here and just see if it stays on. I'm, I'm getting to the winding up to the end here. So, Okay. Well, I'm just going to have to go way up by the house here. Um, I don't know why it worked that long and then just all of a sudden decided not to. So if you give me just a second to get my stuff in order here. Okay, and I'll finish this up. Ah, I don't have much room to... Okay. Well... I'll let you look at the garden. How's that? I'll let you look at the garden. Okay. So there's the garden. Had to switch positions here. Okay. So, all right. So he, so back to Balaam is releasing the word. Hopefully the wind doesn't blow my camera over here. All of a sudden it picked up. Um, so Balaam is telling him, I think for the third time, uh, no, the second time maybe, that he will not move. It doesn't matter what, what, uh, Balak says, uh, he's not, he's, he's not moving. He's not going to curse God's people. Okay. And, um, so we have to stand ground. Okay. We stand ground and, and God God does the rest, okay? We stand on God's word, and that is how we defeat the enemy. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee, okay? So, um, all right. I got a little bit off. Um, I, was, I was flowing. I was flowing there until the camera stopped. So, let me just see where I am, okay? Let's, let's go. Let's go back to uh numbers 20 23 21 uh he's he's giving balak the word so let's start at 22 i think is where i stopped 23 22 god brought them out of egypt for them he is as strong as a wild ox no curse can touch jacob no magic has any power against israel um that is really something that he says that because you got to remember he was a magician. He himself was a magician. So he, that's what I'm saying. When you have a radical encounter with God, um, you turn from your wicked ways. You absolutely turn from your wicked ways. So he was even speaking against the very thing that, um, the very thing that was his livelihood. Come on, come on, somebody. He was speaking against the very thing that um, was his livelihood. That's how he made money. And he says, no magic has any power against Israel because he knew that God's hand was with them. Okay. And for now, for now, it will be said of Jacob. What wonders God has done for Israel. Israel is God's people, you guys. You don't, don't listen to this like it's a Bible story, like I'm just talking a, a story from way back, way back. Okay? Israel is God's people. So listen to it with spiritual, uh, with spiritual ears. No curse, no magic has any power over you, Israel, God's people. God is with you. Israel, God's people, these people rise up like a lioness, like a majestic lion rousing itself. They refuse to rest until they have feasted on prey, drinking the blood of the slaughtered. Okay? They, they do not rest. God's people do not rest. Okay? We don't, we don't, we don't lay our armor down. We don't take time off 
okay? We are always, always, always um, in in battle, okay? And and yes, the Lord is our defender. Yes, but we must have we must um, have the armor on and do whatever He says to do. Go wherever He says to go, okay? Um, we've been given armor because it's it's our job. It's our job to do whatever he tells us to do to defeat the enemy in this world. He is with us. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. Um, people rise up. Okay. They refuse to rest until they have defeated. Okay. Have feasted on the prey, drinking the blood of, of the slaughtered. The slaughtered. This is the prey would be the enemy here, you guys. Okay. So you got to have spiritual ears. Um, yes, I know I'm preaching to the choir on some but some some not okay so um then Balak that's the king the Moabite king said to Balaam fine he's you know he's frustrated he's angry fine but if you won't curse them at least don't bless them so here we go more manipulation more manipulation you know Balaam says, God said, God said, God said, I ain't doing this. I won't do that. I'm going to do what God said. Okay, here, here comes the snake. Here comes the snake. We're going to sneak in another way. We're going to manipulate it because what does fear do? He's in fear and pride. Fear, manip fear and pride manipulate and control. I'm going to say it again. Fear and pride manipulate and control. They do not sit still. They have to work it out in their own power and their own might and not by, by, by the spirit. Now, if you trust your God, sit still. That is doing the, that is the will of God. That literally is how you fight because you know your God. You don't pick up your own weapons. You pick up his weapons. Have faith. Sit still. In him. Submit to him. Stop working it out. Stop trying to, to, to do whatever you think is the answer. Make it work. Manipulation and control. That's witchcraft. Stop it. Knock it off. So... The king Balak said to Balaam, come, I will take you to one more place. Okay, I already read that. Here he goes. Here he goes again. More manipulation. Okay. Um, let's see. So now I'm going to go to tw top of 24. Um, so now Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel. Okay. I feel like I should... Um, no, we're gonna we're gonna go there. By now, Balaam. By now, Balaam. Balaam is the now the true prophet. Okay, he's been converted from the false prophet to the true prophet. Okay, only saying what the Lord says to say. Real. So Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel, God's people, Israel, God's people. So he did not resort to divination as before. Okay. True conversion. Hallelujah. True conversion. Do not say, doth saith the Lord. I'm, this isn't scripture right now. This is me speaking. Do not say, doth saith the Lord, doth saith the Lord. I heard the Lord say, God said, God said, doth say it the Lord, blah, 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 if God didn't say it. Stop. Stop it. Knock it off. You're going to have to answer for that. You're playing with God. You're playing with his word. It's very, very, very serious. And when, and when people believe that you're a man or a prophet, they believe you. They, they believe that, um, they trust, they trust you as a man or woman of God. So they, they go after the things that came out of your mouth. But it wasn't God at all. 
Yeah, it's really serious. It's very serious. Stop it. Repent. So Balaam, Balaam says he, he will not resort to divination as before. Instead, he turned and looked out towards the wilderness where he saw the people of Israel camped. That's God's people camped tribe by tribe. Then the spirit of God came upon him. Here we go. <laughs> Here comes the fire. Here comes the fire. Okay, just a second. I'm underlining in my book. Then the spirit of God came upon him. And this is the message he delivered. Come on, somebody. This is the fire of God. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor. The message of the man whose eyes see clearly. Remember along the trail, along the trail with his donkey, um, God had to open his eyes so he could see clearly and go from a false prophet to a true prophet. And then the message of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with his eyes wide open. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob. How lovely are your homes, O Israel. They spread before me like palm groves, like gardens by the riverside. They are like tall trees planted by the Lord. I see so much in this right now, just so much. The gardens planted by, you know, we're, we're referred to as, as a mighty tree planted beside the stream, you know, where we um, draw from the living waters. You know, gardens have, have, um, have fruit in them, okay? And they draw from the living waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Water will flow out of your belly, Rivers of living water will flow out of your belly. Um, their offspring have all they need. That's our, the children, our generations after generations. Their kings will be greater than Agog. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt, brought them out of sin. For them, he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him. He devours all the kings, all the kings that come against, all the powers that be, all the um, principalities. He devours them. He opposes them, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows. Like a lion, Israel crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares to arouse her. Okay, don't mess. Don't mess with the king of the jungle. Don't mess with the lion. Don't mess with the lion. Don't mess. Don't mess. Don't play with them. Don't play with them. They are the king of the jungle. They're the, the king of the jungle because their king is the king. The king, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Don't mess with them. Don't mess with them. These are the, the king of Judah or the lion of the tribe of Judah. These are, these are the offspring. Don't mess. Blessed is everyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed is everyone who curses you. Okay, cursed are you, enemy. Cursed are you, Balak. Cursed are you. Cursed are you, false prophets. For, cursed are you, leaders and kings who manipulate and control. Cursed are you. Stop it. So he, 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 he says, blessed is everyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed is everyone who curses you. King Balak flew into a rage against Balaam. He angrily clapped his hands and shouted, I called you to curse my enemies. Instead, you have blessed them three times. Now get out of here. Okay, so he knew he was defeated. So he's going to throw a fit now. So he knew he was defeated though. And um, let's see. Just trying to find a place to land here. Um, so he says, get out of here. I promised, I promised to reward you richly. 
but the Lord has kept you from your reward. He thinks, he thinks the Lord has kept him from his reward because his mind is on the things of this world. He thought he could buy him. He thought he could manipulate him. But we don't build our treasures here. We build our treasures in heaven. So I don't care what you offer me, how much money you put in my face. I am not taking your seeds of corruption. I don't care how much money you give me. You're, if your seed is defiled, I'm not receiving your seed. Your seed doesn't get to go into my, into my fertile ground. Oh, no, it does not. Ain't happening. I will return to sender as fast as you sent it to me. Void void return to sender ain't receiving that money ain't receiving that seed no thank you so because my god will bless me far beyond what this world has to offer okay i don't have dollar signs in my eyes i have i have the king of kings and the lord of lord in my on my in my eyes All right, uh, even if Balak were to give me, okay, let me back up. Balaam told Balak, don't you remember I told your messengers? I said, even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord. I told you that I could say only what the Lord says. Now I am returning to my people, but first let me tell you what the Israelites will do. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. So let me back up on that one. I would be powerless. So see, see, he had the revelation. He had the revelation that, that God is the most powerful God. He's the king of kings. He's Lord over the kings of this world. He knew. He knew. Yeah. So, um, Lord, what else do you want to say? What else do you want to say? Shokoraba se la yeke tokoma shi te da iseke no koraite. Erema shukala yeke tokoma si keraba shukaraba si terama koraba. Stand ground, people. Stand ground. Stand ground, speak truth to power, do not be manipulated, do not sell your soul, do not make covens, covens is witchcraft, covens is manipulation. Repent from your false um, prophet prophecy prophecy repent from that do not say anything that god does not say to say you will pay and you will pay dearly you will pay dearly god will not be pleased with you and if you don't turn from your wicked ways you're going to have to pay you're going to be sad Anything else, Lord? Anything else, Lord? We thank you for your word, Lord. I just pray that um, it opens up. Um, burn up anything that was not from you and uh, release, your, release your spirit. Anoint it. Let it land in fertile ground. Let it grow. Let it be a warning. Let it be a um Shokoraba Sike Tokoraba Sike Tokoraba Shikiraba Ilaye Ke Tokoraba That that we it grows. Yeah. A seed that grows. <laughs> That we are not deceived. We are not moved by the enemy. 
We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you on your um, on your holiday weekend if you're spending time doing something um, out of the ordinary, getting some rest, relaxation, peace, spending time with people you love. I bless you. Um, go with God. Go with God.